Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an adventure, drama, sci-fi film called Chronicle. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Andrew is a high schooler living in Seattle with his sick mother and abusive father. Andrew is an outcast, having little to no friends and being relatively unknown at his school. Tired of his father's abuse, Andrew decides to buy a camera as a sort of deterrent for his father. Andrew tells his father that he'll be recording everything from this point on. Andrew visits his bedridden mother, Karen, and she wishes him a good day at school. Andrew's cousin and closest friend, Matt, picks up Andrew, and they both head to school. Matt gives Andrew nuggets of wisdom from philosophers he's been reading on, and Andrew teases him. Andrew spends some time recording his school, showing the camera where he eats and hangs out. Some teenagers bully Andrew and take his camera away, teasing him. They eventually give it back after ridiculing him. On their way home, Matt invites Andrew to a party, but Andrew declines. Matt is adamant about making Andrew come, thinking that some time outside can be good for him. Andrew reluctantly agrees. At home, Andrew looks through his recording when his father, Richard, barges in. Richard smacks Andrew across the face, pushing him to the floor. Richard angrily tells Andrew that he's to do what he's told. Matt and Andrew later arrive at the party and split up. Andrew records the party, seeing people having fun and dancing. He then spots Casey, a girl who also records her day for her vlog. Matt steps in and awkwardly tries to impress Casey, again dropping philosophical jargon. Andrew gets into some trouble when a guy accuses Andrew of filming his girlfriend. Andrew steps out of the party and heads to the parking lot. He cries as he cleans the dirt off of his camera. Steve, the popular kid, running for class president, calls out to Andrew and invites him to join him and his friends. Steve says he and Matt had found something in the woods and asks Andrew to film what they've discovered. Andrew joins Steve, and they arrive at a hole in the middle of a clearing. They hear strange sounds coming from the pit, and Steve dives in to explore. They explore deeper into the hole and find a cavern containing a massive glowing crystal. It starts humming, and everything begins shaking before turning black. Several weeks later, Matt, Steve, and Andrew are in a backyard where they throw a baseball at each other. When Matt throws the ball at Steve, the ball swerves right and hits Steve sideways. Matt then throws the ball at Andrew, and Andrew stops the ball midair with his mind. Andrew's nose starts bleeding, and he drops it. The three then play with Lego pieces inside and levitate the pieces without touching them. It appears that the mysterious crystal has given them the power of telekinesis. Later, they decide to return to the hole but see dirt has wholly filled it in. Authorities also arrive and tell the boys to keep away from the spot. On their ride home, Steve and Andrew talk about their families. Andrew tells Steve about his mom, and his father who used to be a fireman. An accident had injured Richard, and he now stays at home and collects insurance checks from the government. Steve also shares some problems at home with his parents. At home, Andrew practices levitating his camera. He hears his father on the phone, begging someone for more medical aid for Karen. Richard says he can no longer afford Karen's medication, but her situation is getting worse. The next day, Andrew takes Karen out for a stroll in the marina, and the pair enjoy a lovely time out. Later, the boys are again outside, practicing their powers, throwing stones at a lake. Andrew asks Matt if he likes him, and Matt says he does, but he used to find Andrew hard to communicate with. Andrew then asks him if he thinks they can do more with their powers. At school, Matt theorizes that their power is equitable to a muscle that they have to improve for it to get stronger. The night before, he says he could lift up his bed off the ground without getting a nosebleed. If they lift something up too heavy or try to do something too complicated, it would strain their power and their nose would start to bleed. He suggests a slow progression to improve their strength. Andrew then suggests heading somewhere public to practice their abilities, and they decide to do it at a supermarket. They each begin messing with people, doing harmless pranks. Andrew makes a grocery cart roll away, Steve scares a child by levitating a stuffed animal, and Matt tries to get a piece of gum out of a person's mouth but ends up whacking them instead. At a diner, Andrew tries stabbing Matt with a fork to show how their powers can even protect them from sharp objects and projectiles. Andrew then manifests an image of the Virgin Mary on his pancake pate, scaring one of the waitresses. The boys are having a fun time, using their powers foolishly. At the parking lot, Steve tries pranking a woman. He successfully moves her car to a different parking spot. Matt and Andrew are impressed, noting that this is probably the heaviest any of them have ever lifted. Steve's nose starts bleeding profusely, but he maintains he feels fine. The woman returns, and they all laugh at her confusion. Later, they're on a drive home when a truck behind them starts honking. Andrew steps in, aiming to make the pickup truck swerve a little, but ends up putting too much force. 
The truck veers off the road into a ravine and falling into a river. The boys rush out to help, and Stephen dives into the water to retrieve the driver. They then call the police. Steve is visibly shaken by what happened, and Matt confronts Andrew. Andrew seems aloof and distant as Matt talks down to him, saying he's put someone in grave danger. Matt says their powers are getting stronger and harder to control and proposes implementing rules. The following day, they meet up with Steve at a landfill and see that he's levitating above them. He encourages them to try it out. Matt goes first but has trouble getting himself off the ground, faceplanting several times. Andrew tries next and gets himself up, ecstatic that he can float. He joins Stephen, and they both cheer. Later, the boys are soaring through the clouds. They all speed through the sky, flying past one another at neck-breaking speeds. They even start throwing a football, catching it mid-air. They slow down, floating above when a plane suddenly flies past them. Steve gets knocked out, and Andrew flies in to save him. He grabs Steve, but they keep falling. Andrew slows them both down seconds before hitting the ground, and they both end up unscathed. Matt joins them, and they all start laughing and cheering among themselves, elated knowing they're the first humans to fly. They then gather for a sleepover at Steve's house, and Andrew tells them that the day has been the best day of his entire life. The next day at school, they plan to go on a trip around the world, flying to their dream destinations. Steve says he's planning a weekend trip to Hawaii, and Andrew says he wants to go to Tibet, thinking how beautiful and tranquil it is, saying that the monks there have achieved a high level of enlightenment. Matt later meets with Casey, handing her a donation. He says it's for the drought she mentioned in one of her vlogs. Casey then tells Matt he can just mail it in himself. Casey asks Matt the reason for his sudden change, saying how he used to be too smart to hang out with, and now he seems to care much for world issues and starts hanging out with people. Matt says that he's changed now, and he has a better understanding of people. He tells Casey he wants to hang out with her too, but Casey closes the door on him. Andrew and Steve hang out on top of a building, and Steve is amazed at Andrew's utilization of his power, seeing that he can levitate his camera with finesse. Andrew then says that he's been lonely for a long time before they got powers. He didn't even hang out with Matt that much, even though they're cousins. Steve then proposes they enter the school talent show, telling Andrew he'll help him with the performance. Andrew then prepares for the talent show, showing off his attire to Karen. As he heads out, Richard calls him and tells Andrew he's suspicious of him. Richard says he knows Andrew is up to something. At the talent show, Matt is operating the camera, and he runs into Casey, who's also recording the event. Steve and Andrew appear on stage and begin their magic show. The illusions and tricks are pretty much child's play for Andrew, using his telekinetic abilities. The two put on a great show, their classmates and schoolmates cheering all throughout the performance. Matt and Andrew then head to a house party where people all greet him. At last, Andrew experiences how it's like to be noticed and appreciated. The whole ordeal is very validating for him. Andrew meets a pink-haired girl at the party, and they start talking and hit it off immediately. Andrew has fun at the party, and Matt is left with the camera. He leaves a sweet message for Andrew, but Casey spots him and invites him to leave the party. Steve is then the new cameraman, and he looks for Andrew. He goes upstairs to discover that Andrew had thrown up all over the girl he was with. Matt comes in laughing, but Andrew doesn't take the situation lightly. He shouts at Andrew, telling him to leave. The following day, Andrew plays with a spider before making it levitate and splitting it into pieces. Richard is then seen looking through Andrew's room, and he sees the camera. Richard then confronts Andrew about spending too much money on a camera while having barely any money for his mother's medication. Richard continues shouting at him, and Andrew answers back, angering Richard. Richard then attacks Andrew, pinning him down, but Andrew fights back, using his powers to overpower Richard. Andrew tells him he can crush him if he wanted to, then throws him to the floor. Richard is left moaning and groaning. Meanwhile, Matt is with Casey when his nose starts bleeding even though he hasn't used his powers. Andrew is in the middle of a thunderstorm, crying. Steve arrives, saying his nose started bleeding, and he heard Andrew's voice calling to him. Andrew asks Steve to leave him alone, but Steve tells Andrew to calm down and return to the ground. Andrew gets angrier, and lightning suddenly strikes. Time passes, and Andrew records a funeral. He sees Casey and Matt attending, as well as their other classmates. Steve had been struck by lightning and died. Andrew then spots Matt glaring at him. After the service, Matt confronts Andrew about what happened to Steve, questioning how he got struck by lightning when there were no recorded lightning strikes. Matt orders Andrew to tell the truth, but Andrew remains quiet. He avoids the confrontation and flies away. The next day, Andrew is back at Steve's grave, apologizing. He says he didn't know what happened, and he must have lost control. 
He goes back to the pit where they got their powers and sees it's now overgrown with grass, and a pattern has started forming around it. Andrew then heads to school and sees people ridiculing him for vomiting at the party. He sees the pink-haired girl with her friends, and her friends make fun of him too. The bully also teases him, mimicking him vomiting. Andrew is overcome by anger. He approaches the bully and pulls several of his teeth out. At a bathroom stall, he shows the camera the pieces of teeth and describes how he took them. At a junkyard, Andrew talks to his camera and speaks about evolution and the concept of an apex predator. He talks about how predators don't feel guilt when killing their prey and how humans don't feel guilt when stepping on ants or squishing flies and mosquitoes. He equates himself as being a human apex predator. His abilities may bring harm to people, but for him, that's just how things are. He then crushes a car behind him with ease. Matt barges into Andrew's room, finding out about what happened at school with the bully. He stresses how important it is for them to follow their rules as they're getting too powerful for their own good. Matt then warns Andrew that he'd have to step in if Andrew doesn't stop harming people. They get into an argument, and Matt throws a punch, but Andrew catches his fist. Matt then leaves immediately. Andrew heads to the pharmacy to get more medication for his mother, but the pharmacist tells him he doesn't have enough money. Left with no other choice, Andrew decides to take more drastic action for his mother. He takes his father's old firefighter suit and goes out to forcefully take money from people. He first targets the men on his street who always make fun of him. He blasts all of them away, smashing them into cars and onto the asphalt. In seconds, he renders all of them unconscious and takes all their money. He then goes to a gasoline station, disabling the cashier and taking all the money in the cash register. As he makes his way out, the cashier chases after him with a shotgun. Andrew swipes the shotgun away, and it ends up firing at a gasoline tank. The tank explodes, and the cashier and Andrew are thrown back. Andrew catches fire and loses consciousness. Andrew gets admitted to a hospital, and Richard is called in. Richard enters Andrew's room and starts crying. He tells an unconscious Andrew that Karen had died. He then blames Andrew for her death as he thinks she wouldn't have died if he hadn't been looking for Andrew. He starts shouting at Andrew, ordering him to apologize for Karen's death. His shouting gets louder, and Andrew finally wakes up, blasting a hole through the hospital wall. Matt is at a birthday party when his nose starts bleeding. He immediately knows something is wrong with Andrew and sees a news report about an explosion at the hospital. He immediately leaves with Casey driving to the hospital. They reach the hospital and see Andrew picking up Richard and dropping him. Matt swoops in and catches Richard. They get into the car again, but Andrew finds them and lifts them to the space needle before dropping them. Matt gets Casey and flies her down to safety. People are recording everything on their cell phones, and police and medical personnel scramble to handle the situation. Matt flies up to Andrew, trying to calm him down and convince him to stop. Andrew says he has always been treated terribly, and this is his chance to take revenge on everything that has happened to him. Matt promises that he'll help change his life and tells him they could run away and start a new life. Matt continues speaking, but Andrew throws a bus at him. Andrew then lands at a building, and Matt gets up to fight back. Andrew and Matt fight, getting thrown all over the city. They smash through roads, cars, buildings, apartments, and houses, not showing any signs of slowing down. They throw vehicles at each other, Andrew having no regard for human life. Matt still tries to convince Andrew to stop, but the police surround them. Matt gets shot, and Andrew blasts the police back before flying away. They both land at a plaza in front of a building, where the police surround them again. Matt begs Andrew to stop, but he doesn't listen. The police open fire, but Andrew stops all the bullets. Andrew then starts shouting, and the buildings behind them shake violently. Glass and concrete crack, and debris rains on them. Matt pleads with Andrew not to hurt the cops, but Andrew is too far gone. He realizes there's no other way but to kill Andrew. Matt takes the statue behind Andrew and aims a steel spear at him before impaling him through the chest. Everything falls quiet, and Andrew hangs lifeless in the middle of the plaza. The police approach, but Matt flies up and escapes. Time passes, and Matt is seen flying above snowy mountaintops. He talks to a camera as if it were Andrew, and he points it at several Tibetan monk temples. He leaves, saying farewell to Andrew. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.